Okay, here's a short video that might help you set up the stresses in your truss simulation. And so to start with, we're going to imagine we have a single truss element. And let's talk about how we can calculate the stress and the strain in this element. So one thing to keep in mind is that we want to be consistent with the way that we formulated our problem. So if the if we can imagine that node 1 and 2 of our element here, let's imagine node 1 doesn't move, and let's imagine that node 2 moves to here. So it's moving perpendicular to the element. And so our new element is here in blue. And so you might be tempted to say, all right, I'm going to say that the original length of the element is L0, and the new length of the element is L, and so I will calculate my strain as L minus L0 divided by L0. Now this is what you would expect from probably what you learned that strain is, but it's not consistent with the way we set up the problem. And the reason is, is because this is a very nonlinear deformation. And it's not linear because of the way we calculate L. L is something like, you know, by the, Py Py by the Pythagorean theorem, L is related to the displacement of U2Y by L squared is equal to U2Y squared plus L0 squared. And so that's not linear. And if this, if our strain is related in this way to the, well, wait, let me take the square root here, a nonlinear expression in terms of our displacements, then we can't have a system of equations that is linear. So these two things are not compatible with each other. And if you compute the strains this way and you were to calculate the stresses and then calculate the forces that nodes, you'd find out it's not in equilibrium. So what can we do instead? So what we need to do is compute the displacement and then the strain consistently with the way that we did in the problem. And what that means is we need to take our element degrees of freedom, u1x and u1y, of course these are just the element ones, and u2x and u2y, and we need to compute the displacement along the element direction. Now the good news is we already have, we've already kind of figured out how to do this. And the relationship to use is to say that the, the displacement along the element direction, so I'll say u e x prime, and this is going to be a, like a vector, is equal to the R matrix that we've already computed dotted with the degrees of freedom to the element, right? So again, what this is doing is it's taking the dot product of the displacements of each direction, uh, of each node, with the direction of the element to calculate the projection of the displacement along the element direction. So how would we do that? All right, so you've solved your system of equations. You have K, or D is equal to K backslash F, Make sure you use backslash and not forward slash. And then what we want to do is we want to go element by element, and we want to compute the, the strain and then the stress of each element. So to go over the elements, we can do the same thing that we did before. We can just do another loop over our connectivity matrix. And then what we can do is we can gather the displacements of the node right, of the element, I mean. And so the way to gather those displacements is we need to use the gather matrix, or we need to use the, the concept of gathering. So this is kind of mathematically how we write it, but remember the way that we do this is we define the scatter map. So I'm not going to do that because you've already done that. So make, don't reuse it from before because it'll simply just be whatever the last element is, but recalculate the scatter map just as you did before. And then you can gather your element displacements. And so since scatter should be a four by one vector, then your DE is going to be a four by one vector as well, because you're gathering the four components of displacements. Then compute R. Again, you've already done this. Don't reuse it, you have to recompute it because it differs for each element. And then all you have to do is just multiply RE times DE. And just to check the size of these, right? 
RE is defined as a two by four, and DE is a four by one. So this will give me a two by one vector, which will give me the displacement of U1 along the element coordinate X, let's call it X prime, and the displacement of node two along that direction. It's kind of a two by one, not a one by two, so I'll write a transpose there. And so once I have those, if I want to calculate the change in the length of the element, it's just the difference of u to x prime e minus u one x prime e. So it's just the difference of, so if I call this, um, I don't know, u along the element or something like this, it'd be like u e two minus u e one, okay? Now, if you look at the stiffness matrix, we actually kind of get that, right? So you have this one, negative one, negative one, one. So this dotted with DE, oh, that's what we should have called them, just DE. Um, so if we dot that with DE, what is that doing? Well, it's taking the first value of DE minus the second value of DE, and then it's taking the second value of DE minus the first value of DE. Because remember, this is going to give me the forces on the element. And so the force on node one is pointing to the left from positive notation, and the force at node two is pointing to the right. So that's the difference why there's the sign change. So this kind of walks you through. So from this, you can calculate the change in length of the element. You already know how to compute the original length of the element, so then you can compute the strain. Once you compute the strain, you can very easily compute the stress by multiplying them by the Young's modulus. And then the last thing is, well, how do I then get this vector of strains? There's a few ways you could do this. The first way is you could say, well, I'll call my strain sig for sigma, and I'll initialize it as zeros by the um, number of elements by one. So that's one way I could do it. But the problem is, is this loop, I don't know the element number. Now I can loop over the element number like you did in homework two, that's fine. Or another option, which isn't the best performance, but for what this assignment it's fine, is I can just define sigma as an empty matrix. So if I do this approach, then I would have to have something like sigma sub e oops, is equal to the stress. But if I take this approach, then what I can do is I can say sigma of end plus one is equal to the stress of that element. And what n plus one does is it says, add a new value to the end of this array. So initially the array is empty. It's just gonna add a new value. It's gonna add a first value to it. Next iteration is gonna add the second value and so on. So that's two approaches. This way, I think it's simpler. Just keep in mind if you're building up huge arrays, it's a little bit inefficient. But for this problem, it's perfectly fine. All right, hope that helps.